evening. Praise God. Uh, so I have been doing this uh, 21 day devotional that I started on January 1st. And the reading from yesterday was uh, probably the most impactful for me so far. And I don't know why, but yesterday was a, a day full of uh, very heavy emotions. Um, I was at home folding some laundry, uh, ironing some shirts, which you kind of have to learn to do when you live by yourself. Uh, and I was watching a show, and something happened in the show that it took me back from uh, when Arianna and I worked together from that point. And it was really hard for me because in this particular scene, this couple, which happened to be going through the same thing, uh, the lady's at the hospital because her dad had a heart attack. And her husband comes and starts talking to her mother and whatnot. And the way she's looking at him interact with her family I remember how my wife used to look at me that way. <clears throat> so I started crying. But then I remembered that God told me, don't worry, because she will look at you that way again. And then, so I want to read you the, the reading from the devotional from yesterday uh, so you can understand where, where I'm coming from. Uh, the title for the reading says, The Holy Spirit Guarantees Future Promises. Who are the you also to whom Paul referred? This meant all non-Jews who had become believers. Christ came to die for everyone, not just Jews, but Gentiles too. God had promised that through one of Abraham's descendants, all peoples on earth will be blessed. Genesis 12.3 Jesus fulfilled the promise when he opened the way of salvation to everyone. When we believe the good news, God saves us. In that moment, moment, God gives us his Holy Spirit, who is like a security deposit. The fact that we have the Holy Spirit means that all the rest of God's promises will come true. God's promises about eternity are as certain as our salvation. There is no need to doubt what God, what God says. While we may not understand everything in our lives or even agree on how the future will play out, we can agree that Jesus is, Jesus is coming back to take us to heaven to be with him forever. We can have confidence in God's promises for the future. The Holy Spirit testifies daily to the fact that all of God's promises will come true to the praise of his glory. God's promise to me, I gave you my spirit as a guarantee that I will give you everything else I promised. You can be confident in all of my promises for the future. Amen. And then he has a little prayer that says, God, thank you for giving me your Holy Spirit and for identifying me as your child. Thank you for the glorious future you have in store for me. And then he goes on to the scripture of the day which is Ephesians 1, verses 13 and 14. In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. Yes. <coughs> so I know that what the Lord says is true, what he promised me mm -hmm. is true. What he promised you is true. Amen. Hang in there. Yes. And to finish this, uh, this is something that my mom shared with me this morning. Uh, she started this trend a few days ago that every day she sends me a little message in a, in a picture and puts a little uh, message on herself like, have a good day, just don't worry, it'll happen something like that. Mm -hmm. And this one says, 
God changes caterpillars into butterflies, sand into pearls, and coal into diamonds using time and pressure. He's working on you too. So that's what I have. <laughs> Anyone has a praise report, testimony, prayer request? I open the floor. Questions? No? All right. So first, here, will I stand? Father, we thank you for us coming together here, Lord, in your presence. We come here, Father, to give you all the praise and glory, Lord, because we know that all the promises that you have made for our lives will come to pass, Father. You are one that cannot lie. You always take care of your children, and we are happy, Lord, and we are glad that we have the right to be called your children, Lord, for we believe the Lord Jesus, Lord, whom you send to come to this earth to show you, to show us who you are, Lord, so that we come to know and experience you, that we come to believe in you, that we receive your Holy Spirit, Lord, the Holy Spirit that you have sent to, to give us the certainty, Father, that all of the promises that you have made are going to come true. before uh, I hated speaking in public that was like my biggest uh, not fear but one of the things that I abhor the most having to address an audience and <clears throat> you know over the years I have been exposed to uh, situations like this when I have to address people and whatnot and I've gotten more comfortable but one of the things that I struggle the most when I'm standing here uh, speaking is when we're going to pray because I'm always thinking, what am I going to say? I don't want to sound like an idiot, you know? But he gives me the words. So. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Good. Good. <laughs> All right. Well, we don't have any announcements, so let's speak the word. Will you not revive us again <clears throat> that your people may rejoice in you? I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons. I speak in new tongues. I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. The eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but I am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer.
power for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Worship. to the store, mm -hmm. I go to church, I go to the gas station, I go to places, so because I can do greater, or because he said do greater and go, mm -hmm. I can expect my shadow to make the lame walk, mm -hmm. my hug to heal people's bodies, mm -hmm. my conversation to give them peace and rest and yes. joy, yes. not because of me, mm -hmm. but because I have never ever said anything or done anything. Sing about it. <laughs> what a great idea. <laughs> As we split by sacrifice, 
God's perfect son gave up his life to ransom back the lost and damned, paying a price, just as the man, as he was broken, heaven was open, our judgment lifted, our sins acquitted, his loving kindness freely invite us into the realm of grace. Sing a new song, sing of his goodness, sing of his goodness, sing of his wonderful love. True love was shown True love divine, as he was gone, cru crucified. He tore the veil, preached the divine, taking us from darkness to light. Us pleasures broken, heaven was open, our judgment lifted, our sins acquitted, his loving kindness. Into the realm of grace, sing a new song, sing of his goodness, sing of his goodness, sing of his wonderful love, sing a new song, sing of his goodness, sing of his faith. Good sign, right? Let's go to commercial. <laughs> Good. 
check, check, mic, check. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. Here I am to
Come once again, Lord, Lord. Come once again. Lord, come again. We love your presence, Lord. We love your presence, Lord. Come again. Dance with your bride. Dance with your bride. Oh, hold us close. Hold us close in your embrace. Breathe on me.
Let your river flow, Lord. Let it water the earth, Lord. The winds of heaven, yes, Lord. Number two was dying. <laughs> Number one was public speaking. Number two was dying. So think about it. The guy giving the eulogy at a funeral is worse off than the one in the casket. It's awful. Praise the Lord. So I'm, I'm done for the night. Praise, the Lord. Praise God. God is good, isn't he? I appreciate the testimonies tonight and uh, uh, because it, they always have a way of touching 
and uh, identifying with and confirming what God, what I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying to me, and then you hear it from everybody else, and then it's like, okay, well, I get it, you know. We do have that same spirit. It is a witness of his spirit, you know, in us and our spirit connecting with his, so uh, actually being one with his. So let's let's look at this. We'll just move right into this for the sake of time. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18, Roberto. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you for coming out tonight in this balmy Iowa weather now that we've had the heat wave move in. I told Roberto it's probably making him homesick for Puerto Rico. The only, you just have to go out to Gray's Lake and kind of just squint a little bit like you can't see the end of the water, you know. And you'll be right there. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help meet, or I will make him and help meet for him. Praise the Lord. All right, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise the Lord. Now, this goes to directly to what Jody was talking about with Dean. But it is what we were all saying, you know. Uh, people need people. And uh, that's how God reveals himself is through people. This is the whole idea of Christ in us, the hope of glory. And if we understand our identity in him, then we're able to present him in a way that is real to other people, that isn't a religious thing, but it's just a reality of God's presence. Uh, wherever we are, he is. And uh, he manifests wherever people expect him to manifest. Amen. So I think that's the, 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 the wonder, if you will, of this church. Because I've been in a lot of churches, big ones, small ones. Uh, but I got to tell you, there, there is nothing like the awareness of his presence in this church. I mean, I feel it in every service. I don't care how bogged down we get in things or how disconnected we become at times, you know, and dysfunctional because of other issues, whatever it is, but it, he never fails to reveal himself in some way. I mean, I feel his presence, and that there's, you can't buy that. You can't pay for that, and uh, you can't earn it. You know, you, it's just something beautiful about God, and it do, he doesn't care. I mean, he cares in the sense that the more people are here, the more people we have evidence of reaching for him. But, in ter but he, he'll do the same thing for us right here tonight Amen. as he would for a thousand people somewhere else. I, we're, I, I can honestly say this. We're feeling more of God, of, uh, the awareness of his presence, than church, many churches that have thousands. Yeah. You, can't, you just can't put a price on this. It's, it's priceless. God is just so good. Praise the Lord. But if you think about the way culture and the way society looks at this. If, if the world is made up of, of just millions of independent beings and uh, all of them coexisting, you know, autonomously somehow, uh, and, and if God is a divine power, then who cares if Adam was alone? Amen? Amen? I mean, a lot of people, religious people and others, I, I may have even said it myself at some time in some moment of stupidity, all we need is God. If that's true, then Adam didn't need Eve. Or he didn't need anybody else, or anything else for that matter. It wasn't good that Adam was alone. It wasn't good because God is a relationship within himself. And humans carry the image of a relational God. Dean needs relationship. You do, I do, everybody does somehow, some way. I'm not saying it has to be the same, but everybody needs relationship. So... It wasn't good for Adam to be alone because be, 
within every human being, every person of God, every person who exists, because within the very being of God, there is never a sense of aloneness. Now, there's times when we like to be alone. I'm probably more of a loner than a lot of people. But I don't always want to be alone. Yeah. I just want to be with when I want to be with, and when I don't want to, I just want to be alone. But that's why my wife sets four rows back, and she knows I want to be alone. I want to be alone. I don't say it. I don't, you know, I just, I just am. You know what I mean? But we need relationships. We, everybody does because God is relationship. Look at Isaiah 9 and verse 6. Humans carry this image of God, this relational God. For, uh, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So just think about it. God is not a separate God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit are one. They're in a relationship that we can't quite relate to, but that's the relationship that we now have with Him. We have become one. There is no difference. There's no separation as far as God's concerned between Him and us. Amen? When God saw that Adam was alone, God said, not good. Right? Then he created Eve. Whoa, man. <laughs> and it was good, Toby. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Okay, let me answer that. Because we're made in the image of God. And God's image is one of relationship. Yes. Praise God. We aren't static forces because God isn't a static force. Right. Praise the Lord. The world is full of relationships because God is a relationship. If you think about it, even in the most fundamental parts of creation, there is relationship. Everything has a, rel a relative uh, response to other things. There's the food chain. There's every, everything has a relational kind of uh, connection. All of creation is this way. And the higher on the food chain you go, the more deeply those relationships evolve and become. Amen? So the world is full of these relationships just like Father, Son, Holy Spirit, union, one. It's all connected. Relationship is at the center of everything, which is why when Adam and Eve sinned against God, they died. Not physically, at least not immediately, but they died spiritually, and they broke relationship. Praise God. And you can ask yourself, why, why couldn't they just go on as independent beings? Why, why couldn't they just continue on separated? Individuals. God could do his thing. Adam could do his thing. And Eve could do her thing. They couldn't because the sin in the garden wasn't just an immoral eating of a forbidden fruit. Amen. It was more than just the disobedience of a physical act. Look at John uh, chapter 17, verse 20 through 23. We focus on the, the sin, which is what we always do, because that's what religion always does, and that's what we've been taught. But that really wasn't the issue. Jesus said, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, thou in me, 
that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them, and thou hast loved me. Relationship, relationship, relationship. That's what it all is. So the real issue was that it was a breaking of divine relationship, not the eating of a forbidden fruit. We're not independent beings. We are deeply relational and relationship people. Praise the Lord. We, we are dependent on our relationships in order to be who we are. Praise the Lord. We are dependent on one another, but most importantly, we are dependent on God. That's the, the premise and the main thrust of the entire Bible. He wants us to trust Him. He wants us to be dependent on Him. That's why He shows us grace. That's why He shows us love. So that we can trust Him, so that we can have relationship with Him based on our trusting Him and His love for us. Amen? So, you know, a lot of people, most people, in fact, are religious at their core. I'm talking about the belief that, that God accepts people based on their behavior. Now, Subconsciously, believing God will like us and God will accept us because of what we do or don't do. Unbelievers even believe it. They just call God karma. Good luck, bad luck, call whatever you want to. But everybody has a belief system, and that's the problem with religion it is basically no different than the pagan or the quote-unquote unbeliever. Look at John chapter th uh, 3, and let's just read this 1 through 15. It's quite a bit, but I don't, I'm going to not take a whole lot of time tonight, so we've got time to read a little scripture. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, but no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So all, all through John 3, Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus, which is a religious leader, and Jesus is messing with all of the religious thinking that this guy's got. He's flipping everything upside down, inside out, backwards. It just isn't making any sense to the guy whatsoever. Then you have John 3, 16, the very next verse, or excuse me, the, the following verse here. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Praise God. The first two words are simply for God. Now, what, what is your first thought of the word God? Is he judge who's distant and far off and disconnected? Amen. Amen. Is he just looking at your life and deciding if you're good or you're bad? Is he impersonal? Is he a policeman waiting to punish you for your screw-ups? 
See, Jesus is just messing with everything this guy believes and with religion itself. What's, what's your image of God? The image, and here's what he's telling you, the image that drives your faith in a very particular direction. Your image of God is what gives you expectation, motivates you. It either drives you towards relationship or it drives you towards religious performance. That's why it's so important in our relationships that we relate the truth of God. Because however they identify with God is going to determine the direction that they end up going. Their expectation of God. Because one of these is going to give them life and the other brings death. One's going to draw them closer to God, the love of God, an understanding of God, the revelation of his grace, and one is going to drive them towards works, failure, shame, and death in terms of their relationship. Amen? That's why we have relationship, because if you don't have relationship, you're as good as dead as far as God's concerned. Right? Adam and Eve sinned. Why? Well, it was a broken relationship because they went for the knowledge of good and evil rather than the relationship that just told them they were like God, that they were good, that they were in a relationship with him. Amen? So look at John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. See, this is way more important than giving people rules. This is what Jody was talking about. Other, the hug. Yeah. You know, you draw close, they draw close. It, when God draws close to us, we should draw close to him. But if you've got a religious mindset, you're going to run. Yeah. Even though God is just wanting to give you a hug, you think it's the, the grand slam coming, you know. Yeah. And many signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. So that, that by definition tells you if he's the son, then there's a father. There's a relationship. The very fundamental teaching here is that this is about relationship. John ends this entire writing by saying exactly what he wants us to understand. Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one, the son of God, has a father. He's in a relationship. Praise God. You know, the, the problem, you know, the problem with people is the same, the, the good part, the bad part. It's all people. You know, I, 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 I said, don't let people drive you crazy. Especially when it, it's within walking distance. We're all, in other words, we're all nuts. Yes. You know, we, it's easy to see other people driving me crazy. Well, don't bother picking me up. It's just over there. I can get there in, as fast as I can get in and out of your ride. You know, I, I'll be there. So God's trying to get us to understand this is about relationship. You can't separate yourself from people just because they're crazy. That's why they're separating themselves from you. Everybody's a little crazy. Uh, everybody's human. But relationship goes beyond that. You know, Adam and Eve were nuts. They thought they were going to do something that would make them like God. When, in fact, they were already like God, and the doing of something was going to make them unlike God. They just, all they had to do was just embrace the relationship. It was all there for them. Everything was, the, everything was provided. So the God that Jesus reveals to us is the God of relationship. And when we think of the word God, if we don't think relationship, then something's wrong with our theology. If we think judgment, if we think criticism, critique, critiquing or uh, criticism or judgment or condemnation or you know, works to measure up, then your theology is screwed up. Sorry, but that's just a fact. 
And people come along and want to feed you their theology of works and of laws, and it's like climbing the tree, amen, to just cut yourself off from, from the relationship. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Uh, John 3.16. For God so loved the world. So, for God, we got that. This is so loved. We were created to be included in his love. He, you know, he didn't create humans and then say, now do a bunch of good works so that I'll like you. He so loved that he did it. Yes. He did it because he loved. So he didn't do it to get us then to do something to get his love. He just did it so we could receive his love. And we've got this so screwed up. He so loved that he created us so that we would have to work, work, work like a maniac to get his love, to get his attention, to be able to have a relationship with him. When his sole purpose of creating us was for relationship, without us doing anything other than receiving it, for being here. Amen? He didn't do it so he could say, now do good deeds. You know, do a bunch of good stuff, and then you'll get my favor. His favor is what brought us here in the first place. He brought us here so that he could show us his favor, so that he could give us grace. Praise the Lord. Okay? For God so loved the world that what? He gave. He gave. This is the core of our story, of our relationship. Amen? Amen? It's not the announcement of an idea or a new religion. It's the reality that Jesus Christ is the crucified and risen revealer of God's love for us. Yes. That's the story. That's what it's all about. Amen? This love that's not just spoken, but it's acted out. It's evidenced, it's proven, it's declared through the death, burial, and resurrection. Praise the Lord. The God who is love has come after us to love us. Praise God. So that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life, but have everlasting life. What is everlasting life? Well, it's eternal life, but what's, what's eternal life? John 17, verse 1 through 3. John 17, verses 1 through 3. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may be glorified in thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Relationship. That's what eternal life is. Praise the Lord. He's better than we could have ever hoped for. He loves us more than we could imagine because he is love. He's more generous than we could dream. He wants to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. He includes us in his beloved, in his beloved, in his family. More than that, he includes us in himself. So what's our role? The same that Adam and Eve had because we've been redeemed. We simply enjoy this God as sons and daughters loved by the Father. Praise the Lord. And then we reveal him to others honestly, lovingly, graciously, not religiously, relationally. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. So that every time we give a hug, every time we share the grace of God, the love of God, every time we, we accept another person's faults and, and failings, 
we are expressing God. We are showing that we're one with him as Christ was one with him and revealed his father. How? But not by judging, not by condemning, but by reaching out and loving, showing them salvation is available through relationship. For whosoever believeth on him will not perish, but have knowledge of God forever. Relationship with God forever. This is not about religion. It's not about measuring up. It's about a God who has made all this a level playing field between him and us so that we can run to him. Not uphill, not downhill, just run right, amen, boldly into his presence and expect and embrace from God that loves us and gave himself for us. To, to reveal God in any other way is not revealing relationship. It's revealing religion. It's revealing uh, demands and condemnation and guilt. God doesn't want to do that. He didn't come here for that. He didn't leave us here for that. Amen? But if we don't know it, it's impossible for us to help others in the relationship if ours is a dysfunctional relationship. God healed that dysfunctional relationship and made it open and accessible and available. And more than that, he hunts us down. He preys on us. He, he does daily, every day, continuously. All of our lives he's done this, and he will throughout eternity. It's not just a question of him giving and then standing back and saying, well, let's see what they do. He's a pursuing God. He chose us before we chose him. Then he draws us by his spirit. Then he embraces us, and he continues. He'll never let you go. You know, once he's got his arms around you, you're there. You're fixed. You cannot escape. He will never leave you or forsake you yes. once in his hands. Amen. No man can pluck you out. Amen. Amen. That's our father. Yes. That's Abba. Yeah. That's daddy. That's God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So don't, you know, I mean, that's the reason behind our hugging one another. It isn't. There isn't something lewd about this. If there is, we got all kinds of problems because I'm hugging guys just like I am ladies. Yeah. So I don't even want to think about that. But you know what I'm saying? This is, it's about the love of God. It's, it's gender neutral. It, it, ha, it doesn't have a, it's like brother, sister, brother, brother. You know, I mean, that's what this is all about. And that's true for people that come in. And if you notice people that first come, you know, I, I've learned over time, I, tr I try not to, unless I know that they're kind of connected somehow, I'll just shake their hand because they freak. You can feel that. You go to, especially a guy, and it's woo. Or it's the woman who's going, got it? Okay. Because they're not used to that kind of relationship. My own mother, when, after I got saved, I don't, I mean, she, my family wasn't a huggy, kissy family. It was, you know, we felt loved, but we were provided for. We were told <laughs> once in a while. I don't remember my dad ever saying it, but that was just the generation, you know. So there wasn't a lot of hugging. Maybe if you were going away on a long trip or something, there'd be a hug, but normally it just didn't happen. So after I got saved, I, I can remember hugging my mother, and she just froze. You could just feel her stiffen, like, what's, this, what's going on here? You know, what's this all about? But over time, she got to where she would initiate the hugs. Yeah. And it's because it wasn't a part of her definition of relationship. But it is God's. God loves. God embraces. And people are desperate for relationship. They may not be able to identify it as that. They may not define it as relationship. But that's what they're hungry for. And in order to relate to God, they've got to have some natural tangible thing to look at to say, ah, that's how God feels. That's how God sees it. And that's our, that's our role. That's what we do. We reveal God the way Jesus revealed God. Honestly, lovingly, compassionately. You know, without reservations. Praise God. Hallelujah. So again, I appreciate the testimonies tonight because what it's doing, it, it's us simply declaring an innate knowledge that we may not be able to attach it to theology all the time, but we know by the Spirit 
this is the thing to do. I mean, yeah. don't you just feel like you want to yeah. reach out and pray for somebody or put your arm around them? You know some people are resistant to that. They, you know, they're kind of paranoid. But you go as far as you can go within the, you know, the norms of your situation, yeah. what, what's acceptable, you know? Yeah. We get them in here, no holds barred. <laughs> you can wrestle them to the ground and just give them a big wet one, you know? God loves you. And let them deal with it, you know? Well, God. You know, in the spirit, of course, I'm talking about. <laughs> Praise God. But God wants us to love and, and, and do it with joy and do it with not as a ritual. Yeah. Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord, sister. But, you know, real, for real. Like, yes. it's, we care. God cares. Yes. I may not have, feel a deep, deep emotion for some stranger that comes in here, yeah. but I can feel what God wants to express to them that God cares, yeah. that God wants them to know it's important to him that they've taken some time to say, hey, I believe that there's a God. Yeah. So I'm here to try to figure out what he's all about, you know. Yeah. That's our job. We, don't, we, we can teach more theology with a hug or prayer yeah. or a hand on the back or, you know, yeah. than we could in six weeks of Bible study yes. that would have greater impact. Amen. Yeah. God bless you. Praise the Lord. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.